Welcome. It's our second panel of the day, but it's probably going to be our most exciting panel of New York Fashion Week, purely because it's such an interesting change in there at the show we're going to be reviewing. Obviously, we're talking Mark by Mark Jacobs. Well, that's the name at the moment. Obviously, the name's going to change soon. And it's the first season for Katie Hillier and Luella Bartley in their sort of creative direction role there. So super, super exciting. And I've also got a super exciting set of panellists with me. Um, but I'll let you guys introduce yourself, starting with you, Hetty. I'm Hetty Judah, I'm a writer and editor and I specialise in fashion, art and design. I'm Rebecca Gonzalez and I'm the assistant fashion editor of The Independent. I'm Jessica Bumpus and I'm fashion features editor of Vogue.co.uk. I'm Carl Pluka, I'm a fashion stylist. I'm Georgina Goodman, I'm a shoe designer. Everyone goes really serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, let's start by talking about um, Mark Jacobs and Mark by Mark Jacobs as a brand. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot, Jess, first, because I know you and I know how much you love Mark Jacobs. Tell me, what is it about it that you love so much? Um, I just think he's very good at translating... Um, well, he's just very good at make, like, creating clothes that you want to wear. There's a real desirability factor there. Um, and I think they sort of... T well, they capture the zeitgeist. Um, but he just makes sort of normal things cool and I think designers that can really tap into that sort of idea and sense of cool are very clever and I think he's really very good at doing that. There are a few people nodding their heads to you nodding. Do you agree with that? That's kind of ability to yeah. tap into zeitgeist. And it's that funny thing with Mark by Mark Jacobs where if I looked at it overall as a brand it wouldn't necessarily be something that I'd be attracted to but I quite often find dresses and, and they're just like just gorgeous and they're really easy to wear. Mm. Totally unlike a lot of other things that are out there. Mm. Um, so it's that kind of instant want factor about it. What, what's your take on the brand, Carl? Um, well, um, I kind of agree with Mark Jacobs <laughs> himself that it's been a bit sort of, sort of stuck recently. I haven't really looked at it um, in the last sort of couple of years and thought that there was any particular sort of piece that stood out to me so much. You're I talking think, purely Mark by Mark. Yeah, yeah. I think we're I'm talking about the, sh yeah, yeah. I, I love Mark Jacobs. I yeah. thought last season Mark Jacobs was one of my favorite shows. But I thought, I think that um, Mark's, Mark by Mark has been styled really well, mm. and it always is. And it kind of gets away from the fact that maybe it's not, there's not so much great stuff in there. And I think that maybe this is why they've, gone for the change that we're going to see tonight and I feel that um, hopefully what I'm hoping for is a sort of really brilliantly styled show which I'm sure it will be but with amazing things you remember I haven't rem I haven't remembered anything from the last few seasons of Mark by Mark Jacobs mm. um, I found it a bit dull mm. so hopefully tonight will change my mind change all of that. and I yeah. guess with accessories which is obviously going to be a real focus it is that sort of memorability, it's that it factor that makes them so, so special. Mm. I asked you this last season, but you gave a really good answer, so I'm going to ask you again, Georgina, because obviously you went with shoes. What makes a really great accessory, <coughs> and why is Katie, Katie Hillier, so good at that? Um, well, Katie has that thing that is about creating a desirable object, uh, whether that be an earring or a hair clip or a, uh, not shoes, but bags. Um, and, but she loves shoes. Um, so she sort of has that sort of magpie um, ability to sort of pick lots of different things and put them together. Um, so she's really great at that. And of course, Luella is just great at the, the creating, again, desirable clothes, girly things and things you want, things you want to keep and wear and, and, and tapping into your, your sort of girliness. Even mm. as, as a woman, you still want to, to feel like you can pick out a nice little dress and, and, and be a bit girly once mm. in a while. And I think, I think what's interesting as well is that, that those two have been picked visibly as designers to come on board while Marc Jacobs is still at the mm. helm of his brand. And I think that's quite interesting that he's, he's sharing the limelight egotistically mm. for a designer to do mm. that, even on a second line. You know, we, we all know designers who are still alive, you've got second lines and you think, oh yes, well they're designing that as well. Well, they're probably not, mm -hmm. but the design is not normally named. And I think that's really interesting to, mm -hmm. to have a designer named. Um, and that uh, and that that makes me like Mark Jacobs even more. Mm -hmm. I know that I didn't answer the question. No, you, you did, you did. Me, <coughs> but isn't it important for a man who's a designer to have women? working with him when he's designing clothes yeah. for women. Yeah. I mean, and most men have got I mean, a lot of women around them. Well, I, I interviewed Karl Lagerfeld 
once when I was at Interview Magazine, and his the main point he wanted to get across was that you know he you know he had Amanda Harlick by his side because mm. she was a woman. Chanel designed for herself, and he wasn't a woman. That's mm -hmm. why he needed her. Yeah, and she wasn't really a stylist as much as she was an influence on what he did. And I think that this is kind of a similar thing mm. in a way because I'm sure Katie and Luella, and I know them very well. They're gonna they're gonna do something which they want to do for real girls, real women, mm. um, that is how real girls, real women want to dress. Mm. So that makes sense. Yeah, and they've sort of said that already, that they're yeah. designing clothes that they yeah. want to wear. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, it's going to be interesting, because also you were saying, like, Luella, she is very girly, so, yeah. and I would probably think that sort of the mark by mark before has been um, more casual and cool and less mm. girly, it's, you know, more laid back, so yeah. it'll be interesting mm -hmm. to see how much that amps up or not. And but interesting, you know. she's not really girly, yeah, no, but exactly. she That's can true. sort of tap into that mm. that side of you that can access your girliness, mm -hmm. and I don't know what that is, because she's actually quite practical, she's, mm. a, you know, not to just give away too many personal <laughs> stuff about her, but she is a mum and she's a proper yeah. woman, and yeah. she's, um, so, we sat in the, on, on the panel last season and said how excited we yeah. were going to be to see mm. this collection. So we can't wait. wait. Yeah. Mm. yeah, here we are again. <laughs> Reminiscing. We lied. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca, what's your take on it all? Um, I think it's really interesting that um, the word girly and kind of girlish keeps coming up rather than the idea of feminine because I think that's exactly what it is. It's not feminine in that traditional grown-up way. It's it's young and it's vibrant, but it is. It's girly, mm. but not in like a twee or mm. saccharine way. I think it's just really energised, um, which I think is, you know, what we all loved about Luella, her previous label, and kind of what Katie brings to it is definitely that same element. Mm. Um, I'm really inter interested to see what it's going to be like, because normally I think Mark by Mark is more... Um, delineated from Mark and then kind of his main line and his Louis Vuitton work always kind of gelled together much more. Yeah. It always seemed like this stood on its own. So now there obviously isn't that Louis Vuitton and this has been kind of um, passed on to another creative generation. It'll be interesting to see what the impact is in the collection. Yeah, completely. Also, I guess it's interesting to think about what's going to happen at Mark Jacobs. Mm. It makes you no, it's great that he's front of house. I know, now. Yeah, yeah. He's coming out and sitting and watching his he own show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just on the yeah, yeah. just on yeah. the girly thing. Um, I mean, I think one thing that's quite interesting. I remember um, reading an int uh, interview with Leila Bartley. I mean, really quite a long time ago. I'm talking like six years ago, with her talking about her vision of this particular kind of English girl. And w reading it, I, it really reminds me of the way that Sofia Coppola was talking about girls when she was filming The Virgin Suicides. So there's almost a kind of um, so. through thread mm -hmm. between the two in this kind of vision mm. of a particular kind of, almost like a slightly kind of knowing innocence and a, a kind of intelligent, an intelligent girlhood. Yeah. It's kind mm -hmm. of funny. Definitely. I mean, the other thing that's interesting is that I always used to think of Mark by Mark Jacobs as being, you know, the quintessential New York youthful mm. label. Yeah, yeah exactly. Very British. And now it's going to be so British. Mm. Yeah, because yeah. that's People. absolutely what yeah, Luella's about. such a absolutely, British yeah. Yeah. No, I designer. Agree. But do you not think there's such a market for sort of Britishness in all its facets, not just in the kind of heritage Burberry sense of the way, but Britishness in that kind of quirky, girly way, you know, even if you look at sort of the worldwide intrigue around the Izzy Blow exhibition, this idea of Britishness as more than just kind of tartan and tweed seems to be quite sellable at the moment. I wonder if it just feels very now. What do we think about Britishness going abroad? Well, I, I mean, wouldn't, I mean, I think the fact that they've, um, they've got this design studio in Shoreditch is practical, isn't it, really? Yeah. I mean, mm. Would they be more inspired being in New York? I don't think so. I mean, no. I've lived in New York. I wasn't more inspired living there. I lived there because I had to work for a magazine. But I just think that it, I mean, I don't think their influences are going to be very British. I think they're going to come from all over the place. Mm. So. But we do have an amazing um, uh, centre for, for education, mm. sort of amazing colleges, and they attract everyone from all over the world. So I, I, I actually think that we do have a very kind of strong British. Um, Aesthetic that everyone mm. taps into, <coughs> and I think that's apparent in mm. yeah. in in a lot of uh, the New York shows I've seen has been that. Uh, I mean, yes, there is a sort of global urban look, which mm. is is not necessarily New York and it's not necessarily British, but 
I think that the Hoxton thing, the East mm. London thing, is so predominant mm. across a fashion at the moment. Well, I think when Luella was doing her own collection, she designed in a very British way, didn't she? Yeah, she, she took, took influence British stere- from British stereotypes stereotype. and developed them yeah. in, a, in, a, in a great way. Mm. But mm. I, don't, I don't feel <coughs> that's what they're going to do with no. this. And I haven't got any... And I guess what she did, there was almost an in-jokey quality to it, which was really great. Yeah. Like you mm. especially got it if you were British, and I wonder mm. if... Even on a practical level. Daddy, I want a pony. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's that thing where we keep talking about mm. this urban style, because she's very much not an urban person. Yeah. Yeah. She's based down in Cornwall. Mm. She yeah. really does take it from that kind of mm. outdoorsy, you know, I guess more like almost a cliched Melly Molly Mandy kind <laughs> of mm. vision. When she said, Daddy, I want a pony, up. I was thinking, Thelwell. <laughs> <laughs> But I guess the cool Thelwell. Yes. Yes. <laughs> not get she's Thin really Thelwell. really cool. <laughs> um, I guess also though, like you know, um, Britain, England, it's it's very like exotic in like the yeah, American completely. market. And yeah. that's, you know, like P. T. Edson, he came to London because he finds it like really cool and interesting, mm. and yeah. you know, just as much as I mean, I personally love New York and find that exotic. And interesting. I think that mix is probably what will make it so much more interesting. Mm. No, definitely. I think it's always interesting to see the perception of. Mm. London and UK style from international brands and how mm. they pick up on things that we just take for granted, like yeah. the punk spirit that is mm. London. We completely take that for granted, I but think. But why do we, it's funny, isn't it? We so always funny. go back to punk. Yeah. That's the reason why so many fashion stylists in, on American magazines are British. Mm. Mm. Why is that? It's, quite, it's, it's funny, isn't it's, it? It's interesting. On the other hand, if we went to New York, they would say that punk started there. And yeah, you know. exactly. <laughs> New York dolls. Yeah. 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 yeah, but that's kind of, even like that sense of their punk and our punk, mm. it's like, it's so different. And yet, oh, I think, well, I don't know, as a, as a Brit, when I think of punk, I think of London punk rather than yeah. Yeah. New York punk. Well, London punk seems to be, New York punk feels very musical, whereas mm. here it was a bit more of a kind of movement. It yeah. Was, yeah. I want to go back a little bit and talk a bit more about accessories, just because I think it's not something, I've said this before, we don't talk about it that much on this panel, you know, what makes a great bag, what what the market is like for accessories at the moment. And can I just say something about the, the choice of the creative director is yeah, an accessories sure. person exactly, yeah, mm. sure. rather than a clothing mm. person. Yeah. And so I think we've talked a lot about Luella, but in fact it is Katie Hillier who's been appointed creative director and Luella is design director. And sure. that, I mean, I know that's a team, but that's quite an unusual mm. um, positioning as well, you know, that you would normally have. So she would, Katie hired Luella. Yes, mm. Mm. exactly. So, yeah. you know, Katie is the, is the mm. sort of the, the boss, isn't yeah. she, I guess? I think there's an honesty about it, about luxury brands mm. as well. It feels to me, you know, they do make most of their money from accessories. Yeah. So yeah. to be yeah. so <coughs> frank about that. But Mark by Mark, you, you, you can get a cheaper, even for a second line, it's a cheaper bag. It's mm. a cheaper shoe. Mm. And um, I don't know about where it's made but I would assume that it's not made in Italy I would mm. assume it's sort of made in China or, or made mm. elsewhere because of the price um, but I think there's a desirability for a younger customer um, of that product um, I'm not a buyer of, of mark by mark but I'm a very avid kind of watcher of what's going on mm. and, and um, uh, and I think that they always have those kind of funny fun things like the I, actually, I've got a mark by mark Wellingtons. I remember they were the first people <laughs> yeah, to do yeah, kind yeah. of like high heel wellies, yeah, and they were always really great. So he he was the master mm. of the kind of desirable, cheap, fun, mm. quirky product, mm. wasn't he? Yeah. Well, and you like, could buy condoms in there when I lived in New York. I don't know if you still can. I, think I you don't can know. Like a pencil <laughs> in there. That's yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, you still that's can. Right. Yeah. yeah. But still that's what he's so good at doing, you know, creating that sort of brand that you want to be a part of, and then. Yeah. Bit having like the novelty aspects so when you go in stores you can buy loads of stuff and be yeah. part of that yeah, yeah. Not very buy much a pencil money. case well exactly. i always say it's cheaper to do a stocking <coughs> filler in mark by mark than it is in top shop right yeah <laughs> but do you think that having kt there and having Luella that will kind of you said you know i'm not a mark by mark shopper yeah. and i'm not a mark by mark shopper either but I, it's because i always associate it with a teenager but then yeah. i wonder if they'll elevate it and start getting i think they will i think they will i think there'll be that that thing that happened um uh where there'll be sort of the, the a great purse or a, a you know something it won't might, it might it may not be a bag mm. I don't know I mean well beach bags and stuff and flip flops mm. 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 but I, I well let's see but I, I mm. just don't know I can't imagine I'll be rushing in to, to buy something but I I'm really interested about looking to see what they're going to do. Mm. Mm. 
I mean, I think that interview that Carl was referencing earlier when um, Mark Jacobs was talking about not being so happy with the direction right. that something's gone, he was specifically talking really about the accessories, wasn't he? Yeah. Mm. Dick, he singled them out. Yeah. So he and clearly wants well. to, was it? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So he clearly wants to take a bit more of a kind of yeah. directional push. And he was yeah. saying, I think, in that interview that um, he felt that he'd left people in charge of the accessories yeah. who yeah. being dictated mm. to too much by buyers. Yeah. Well, it yeah. felt too, it felt very much yeah. it was all product. He, he yeah. said yeah. we rested yeah. on, on our laurels, yeah. particularly with accessories in denim mm. as well, he said. Mm. So mm. maybe he, maybe they are wanting to <coughs> give it a bit more of a personality. <coughs> yeah. I mean, not necessarily those. edgy mm. in, in the yeah. normal sense of it, but to actually, you know, and what stand is out. Katie's kind of personality, we had to say her, it's obviously incredibly hard because she's consulted for so many different people mm. and produced such a diverse sort of range of things, but what it, we talked about girlishness and playfulness in the context of Luella. Is that the same for Kate? How would you pinpoint it, Rebecca? Put you on the spot. <laughs> um, I don't know how I would because, as you say, she's designed for so many people, and I think she just knows it's that tapping into kind of the needs or the want that are starting. Sorry, thanks, Liam. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, shut up. <laughs> the set almost looks virtual, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not girly. No. <laughs> no. no but I think it is not girly. It's like Wednesday Adam. Yeah. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of high necks everywhere in New York as mm. well. Good footwear a for creepers. the current climate. Is it sort of cre a creep? Yeah. Leather hose. Quite. It's still got the fun element though, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Little bags, the little bowling bags, and. What does it say? Does it say bunny, bunny hole? hole. Remember it's when Luella used to do tribes of girls in her shows? It'd be yeah. interesting to see if she does yeah. that yeah. in this as well. It's like motocross. Yes, yeah, it's motocross, motocross stuff, girls, isn't it? Isn't oh, yeah, it? it's yeah. motocross yeah. girls. You're right. Yeah. Were we expecting motocross? <laughs> I think I read that she I read was doing that. About ninjas, BMX, I think. manga. Manga. <laughs> I like it's very simple styling, isn't it? Mm, yeah. yeah. I like that clutch. I think Wednesday Adams is a very nice reference to the plants as well. Mm. No. She's my style icon, I love her. <laughs> It's, I think it's more grown up. Yeah, but there's still like the pleats and stuff. It's still got that kind of like that look coming up behind this one with the joggers. It's very kind of Cara, and it's that kind of new girlish. That's yeah. the thing. I think Cara is yeah. very much the kind of you know person in mind. I can actually. I mean, I think it's definitely actually the way that actual girls maybe dress as opposed yeah, to our fancy yeah. power girl dresses. Yeah. That's the thing, I think, is like you talking about Katie's personality. I think she's very real and she's very in touch yeah. with, you know, yeah. she's, she's fun and real and, you know. But even that kind of joggery shape with a kind of sporty it's shape. Yeah. It's a rework man suit. It's a rework man suit. Yes. I think it's sort of, a great silhouette. So do I. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, it's new. Yeah, it feels well, if you looked at the Mark by Mark Jacobs show in the last few years and thought it looked like a new silhouette. Yeah. No, we quite liked the one last, last season, though. We did, but, you know, it, it was well put together. Yeah, it was well put together. That's and I like the but waist, you know, everyone went mad for the waist in the Chanel Couture, but actually it is, it feels quite fresh to see a waist. And, oh, I love yeah, that. It's almost an obi, isn't it, that yeah. girl? Sort of back yeah, to front belt. And you're looking at the, you're trying to decipher the outfit rather than just looking at it as like a mm. cool yeah. teenager. I think it's still quite perverse. It's got that kind of subversive yeah, Definitely. Sitting, yeah, yeah. You're talking about uh, Wednesday outings, but it's also that, you know, those Winona Ryder teenage films where she yeah, had the black eye yeah, on yeah. and was definitely. the Beetlejuice. Yeah. yeah, definitely a Beetlejuice thing about it. Is that There's something kind of shining in about it as well. But you're not really thinking that's a vinyl skirt, are you? Just thinking, oh, it's there. You know, you're not like, really focusing <laughs> it on it. It feels incredibly mm. easy, doesn't yeah. it? Mm. That just looks like school uniform. Yeah, there's a real that. sort of school uniform vibe. I mean, in fact, you're, it's so right because there's actually that feeling that you don't need to necessarily need to buy it. You can always kind of slightly recreate the look mm -hmm. yourself, which actually is quite nice. Mm -hmm. It's very desirable. And that idea of Britishness abroad as well, I think for me that is coming through, you know, even just in the satchel. It does feel mm -hmm. British. Yeah. And I'm happy it does. <laughs> Old stuff. A bit of cyber dog. 
<laughs> yeah, because Cyber Dog was also yeah. the, it's yeah, got a vintage boots. twist, and I so think that's been a little bit missing from. It's like a bit of a nod to Vivian. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm really enjoying all these like neck yeah. things, mm-hmm. little scarves, yeah. which again we've seen like loads all over New York. But um, I yeah, I really like them. And it's nice it's, to accentuate the neck, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah. like scarves and and sort of pashmina stuff, they're kind of coming back and really like as a garment in their yeah. own right, yeah. rather than just sort of flimsy student attire. Yeah. And I think it's this idea of dressing as well, where it's not about like, you know, come to us to buy a great coat, you know, everything's so layered up, and it's this idea of kind of, you know, yeah, you don't just wear one thing and look fantastic, it's a bit mm. more about dressing, which seems quite nice. Oh, I love that she's done a little corset, just because that's so high. It's quite interesting with the amount of patches and things that are coming mm. through in the menswear collections and suddenly seeing this coming through in this collection yeah. too. Well, if you think sort of how comfortable that Raph Simmons yeah. Sort of movie yeah. stuff's going to yeah. be to mm. see. And you were talking on another panel, I, can't, I think it was the Alexander Wang, about people creating like the, the shoe that you desire. And um, we've all had this absolutely crap weather. And I am sure I think every single person yeah. in the whole world will be desiring those shoes. Well, yeah. certainly in England, yeah. will be desiring, yeah. you know, a sensible shoe. Yeah. <laughs> and in New York, when it's so cold. But a fierce, sensible shoe. Fierce, sensible shoe. <laughs> and also, we're seeing quite a lot of kind of cool knit stuff, which feels very now as well, you know, really great. Yeah. Mm. I love that. It says burr. burr. Yeah. In fact, I thought so it said burr. It's quite a big state of It's mangary, isn't it? Yeah, manga, that's all really right. It feels very Tumblr as well. Yeah, it's very yeah. kind of girls now. It's yeah. like Luella's been, she's just, this is the girl who she dressed, but just yeah. same age, but new generation. Yeah, yeah. 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 Fast forward a few years. What is the use of a book for hours without pictures or conversation? So and that's a bit different. Mm. It's a teenager from Froome, isn't it? <laughs> that's very Beetlejuice, though, isn't mm-hmm. it? Mm-hmm. I've never really wanted to put my hair in pigtails right as much as I should. <laughs> you could, you're young enough. <laughs> I think it would look really bad. Yeah, but <laughs> if you see me doing it, Lou, just. <laughs> Like all the shoes are just flat throughout again. Yeah. yeah. Kind of that practicality. And I think also, you know, we were talking about all the different levels of accessories that you can get by mob, from mob by mob, but even just some of the tights that have come out, that's kind of suggested yeah. in this, all the different sort of. You've got your satchels, you've got those clutches, you've mm. got the cute little socks and boots. But we're also uh, thinking about the price points of these clothes. I mean, they look expensive. They're going to be expensive. Yeah. 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 Very expensive. Yeah. Yeah, that would be interesting to see. Mm. But then there are quite a lot of those kind of slightly kind of lyrics printed long yeah. tees that you can imagine wouldn't have to be so much. Yeah. They're pretty distinctive. Yeah. yeah. For me, what I'm impressed by is it feels really sort of. Um, like a suggestion and a response to the way women are dressing, even just with those longer skirts with a sweater on top. You know, it feels very current, but it just feels very new and feels very fresh, and it feels like it's got a very clear point of view, and it's slightly cartoonish, which is yeah. quite hard to get that balance between suggesting something very striking but yeah. it being relevant. You're totally right. I mean, that's that kind of cosplay element definitely comes into it, mm. doesn't it? And mm. I see a lot of teenage girls around us kind of doing a real cosplay thing at weekends yeah. and kind mm. of coming yeah. out with these amazing purple wigs and things. Mm. And actually, they're sticky out skirts. Yeah. Great to have a teenage girl here to know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Would she wear this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, oh, I can't put myself in that position. <laughs> we can go we to our random amazing interns, daughter. guys. Would you, would you wear that? What's their average age? Youth? Youth We've panel? We've yeah. got four nodders like over there. Good. Four <laughs> beautiful young yeah. females. Love it. That's good. <laughs> So is Soundtrack's this what we were expecting? Um, I didn't know what to expect, but I think it's amazing. I think I it's really think amazing. I didn't think they'd go, go too girly. Mm. I didn't think they would do that because it was too expected, right? Mm. Yeah, I think it was. I like the kind of the way it's a bit serious, but yeah. fun. Yeah. I was worried it's they would balanced. go too girly, so I'm yeah. glad that. Yeah. And it, it does. It does feel like a repositioning mm. of the brand and kind of like right, this is what we're doing, and it's yeah. very. Yeah very edited, very succinct. There's yeah. definitely, as you say, mm. a voice and a point of view here. Yeah. So it's very Katie, actually. It's very, yeah. you know, it's very her headband. Yeah. Picked yeah, up, yeah. You know. mm. 
yeah, practical, but kind of well. really cool. It doesn't look like it doesn't look try too hard. No, no. And we all said like guys before, and I, but I think it was one of the first words you used, Jess. And I think that that's what this feels like to me. It just feels very. Like, I want stuff that I've seen in this, which mm, I've so never I. had watching Mark by Mark. <laughs> Maybe I'm a Mark by Mark customer again. Yeah. The new <laughs> Mark by Mark customer. It's all the witchy gothic stuff. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah. I think mean, it's the 80s witchy yeah. gothic. It's yeah. The little shawls. But if you think, ger like, girlishness has changed a lot in how we see it, you know, remember the coolest girls that young girls are aspiring to be like, they are a little bit tomboy or a bit witchy. Yeah, very difficult. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Are you impressed by it, Rebecca? I am. It's, it's so not what I was expecting. Were you expecting something more kind of pink and girly? And no, not pink and girly, just less kind of strict and austere. And also, yeah, it's a statement. It's, it's a really, it's quite a big statement. Mm. Mm. It's really a statement. I think they've done a great job. Yeah. The too. girls done us proud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have. I also love that there's no flesh on show. It feels really kind of modern. And yeah. yeah. It is really well styled as well, Pearl. Is it? Yeah, well. simple and clever, mm. you know. Yeah. And, and and actually, there were quite a lot of bags, but there weren't. Didn't it wasn't feel, bag overload. Yeah. Sometimes you can Didn't feel a little like bit bag placement. overload. Yeah. Aww. 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 <laughs> Love the fact they're wearing <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> they look so cute. <laughs> Oh, should we give them a clap? Yeah. yeah. Girls done good. Yeah. So this is what we wanted. This, yeah. What does this suggest for the Have we honestly seen anything that good in New York this no. week? No. We haven't, right? No. no. Also, haven't. they're mature and they're experienced and it's not, it's not, it's not, um, it's mature women making mm. clothes for a younger generation, mm. which I think is, is quite interesting. Yeah. Mm. But I think there were mature clothes in there as well, mm. like stripped back from the styling. There's definitely stuff for, I'd say, women of most ages. Mm. Mm. No, definitely. But I guess it did feel to me like it was stuff that they would both wear as well. Yeah. That's yeah. how they came out. I was like, going to say they, they had a free like hand. Yeah. 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 They had a free hand. I mean, that's quite amazing. Mm. So we, we suggested this a little bit before we started. We said what this means for sort of <coughs> Mark Jacobs as, as a, for him and for his brand. What, what do we think is he's saying with this? Is it? Is it a real sign that he's looking for sort of even more world domination? What does it suggest? I think it, it suggests that he's a modern designer, um, and he's uh, a, a, a quite modern attitude to not have such a big ego that you have mm. to control yeah. everything. Mm. And I think that's quite an interesting step in fashion that you don't have to control the whole. You have to control your overall creative vision, and his overall creative vision is. That brand, Mark by Mark, is is a label for younger women, and maybe he's not the best person to design it. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's yeah. quite brave. Mm. Do you think we're going to see a real distinction then with it moving forward, where his own label becomes a even more sort of sophisticated, perhaps? Because his own label's always been a little bit playful as well. Like, it's quite. It's an, I it's think not, it will. It's quite spontaneous, Mark Jacobs, isn't yeah. it? Mm. You never know what to expect. Yeah, yeah. It can yeah. Be anything. It can either yeah. be the the most amazing show of the season, or yeah. it can be like. Oh, and last season was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, I love that. Se I love mm. last season. Mm. But um, it, I guess he's very. He has. You know, he works with like he's influenced by something, and he roll, rolls yeah. with it. He hasn't mm. really got a very continuous voice. Maybe that's why he is looking for a more continuous voice, a bit more consistency here, then, mm. to allow him that kind. I of think he needs it. Mm. Mm. I this. mean, I, I think he's 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 proper genius you know because <laughs> i actually really yeah. do because i yeah. think to let something go yeah. is really brave yeah and, mm -hmm. and that will i mean his own brand is you know that his the, it's part of the whole big mark jacobs wheel isn't mm -hmm. it so um i know he's he's got an amazingly powerful maybe it's house. Quite strate strategic but maybe it's quite clever that they have their their studio in East London mm. there's not too much they're not in it's the not same building yeah. around yeah. the corner yeah. so there's not he, it's not being polluted yeah mm. they're, you know yeah. given the so freedom because we all know that if I've worked on so many projects where people come in and 
screw it up because of, you know. Yeah, it's not that. You know, but they're allowed to have their complete you know, freedom. vision. Yeah. Freedom. And do we think that did come through in this show? Yeah, and, yeah. It, and it works every time. Don't yeah. employ people if you don't want them to do what they do. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. empower people. You yeah. yeah. And mm. it's that level of trust that yeah. then they've been able to go off and do yeah. this and come back exactly. with something so strong. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's definitely a sign of uh, more world domination. And those two women really do know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. They're mm. really... Yeah. They've yeah, you'd be stupid to pull them in and then try and sort but of then control them, edit yeah. them. Yeah. micromanage. But the, the yeah. amount of times that that happens, it's so quite totally ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah, but that's what always ultimately trips mm. things up. So yeah, it's great. Mm. Uh, but obviously, like you know, Katie you've worked with Mark before, so as part of that kind of Mark Jacobs yeah, gang that and crew. Yeah. So mm. that I think you he know, trusted her. Important. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's incredible. And she brought in her friend. I mean, yeah. like, hello, in the world of fashion, <laughs> so much shit going on. Backstab. You know, people like working together because they're you know. They're supporting each other, they're the right people. So it's, it's great, so mm. positive on so many levels, and that's a great thing, mm. I think. Had you, it changed your face. Are you seeing? Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I think what this has really done is it's just ratified this as a completely independent house in a way. Yeah. So it's going to be really interesting to find out what the new name is, because you almost then feel that it's actually he's starting up. You know, a group of different labels. Mm. Yeah. You know, we used to talk about diffusion ranges. This is definitely not a diffusion no. range. Yeah. No. Yeah. It, in, in fact, it weirdly isn't particularly connected to, you know, it's really it's separated. Yeah. It's mm. created such an independent vision for it. So you almost see him actually kind of developing mm. like a group of labels mm. yeah. that yeah. are quite separate from one another. It's very interesting. Mm. I mean, this isn't the girl that necessarily grows up to wear Mark Jacobs. This is. No, but I guess that gives more excitement for the future because yeah. you think, yeah. would he then start something else as yeah. well? Yeah. You know, there's that kind yeah. of mm. Well, that's what yeah, I was thinking. Yeah, maybe it's going to be Mark Shoes, mm. and I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a secret, watching. sorry. <laughs> but the reality is that he's designing so many collections we don't even know about. Yeah. yeah. All different licenses. He's doing fur collections. He's doing, every, he's doing so much stuff that you don't even hear about. Mm. So this is just the tip of the iceberg. The tip of the iceberg. Yeah. I'd be happy to give it to them. I'd be like, have it. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, girls. And I guess he's, <laughs> yeah. like, he's a young designer, I think, but he's, been, he's done so much for so long. In a way, it's really great to see someone kind of, you know, take, not take a step back, because I don't think by any means he's going to be less busy, but kind of focus on one thing. You know, that's mm. such a privilege in fashion to be able to do that. Some of our best designers, we work them so hard, you know, they're mm. expected to juggle mm. so many plates. Well, it's quite a power play as well. I mean, to be able to say, I'm giving you this, and then you're doing this, and then mm. I'm going to do this, it kind of shows that his strength of belief in them, but also in himself. Mm. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I think so. A strength to kind of withdraw a little bit mm. from doing everything, especially mm. at a point. Yeah. Because I think the Louis Vuitton thing, you know, it was made quite obvious it wasn't his decision, mm. and they, it could have been very easy mm. for him to want to be as everywhere as possible to prove, you know, yeah. that he still felt great, still exactly, had it. Exactly, yeah. It's even a more confident move. Mm. But I think Mark's had the benefit of having a really trusting part business partner, Robert, yeah, Duffy, Robert Duffy, working mm. with him, who they were just, they're just perfect together. And he, he's taken off so much of the pressure that Mark, you know, Mark shouldn't have to have dealt with and hasn't had to do, had to deal with. So mm. I think that's really been a great thing for, mm. for Mark Definitely. in his career is the fact that Robert's taken away a lot of that pressure I'm mm. sure mm. Mm. particularly with Vuitton and all that stuff and I think that's what's nice again to see a duo here because I yeah. think we're seeing that it's really great and we're seeing it more and more in fashion that people acknowledge it's nice to have two of you yeah know, yeah it's nice to kind of work in mm. do we all agree with Hetty there's definitely not a diffusion line anymore because I think that's such a smart point to have mm. made this because that's really not a diffusion line yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely <coughs> its own line and this yeah. Yeah, feels like the beginning of something completely new and a whole mm. whole new landscape yeah. Yeah. are we excited about it now yeah. do, we, do you think we'll think of it as an independent it's not just Mark Jacobs anymore, it's something completely different. Mm. I think it will take a little bit of time to establish its own identity, but I think it will happen really fast mm. in the scheme of things and it will stay true to it. Mm. This is a really horrible question to ask, but what's our thoughts on what's going to happen at Louis Vuitton? Because you kind of can't not ask. <sighs> what, as in what we're expecting yeah, from the Yeah, what we're expecting, are we happy to s with change in the air there? I don't know, it's kind of one that you don't want to predict. You hope it's going to be a good match. It's obviously, you know, emotions are involved when someone's been there for so long and they're replaced however it's done, you know, rumours were circling for so long. Um, but, you know, things have to change. Mm. He, he might 
be really happy now he's free from that mm -hmm. kind of it's probably quite a big an anvil around your neck mm -hmm. um, but I don't know you can't I don't think you can wish ill on something mm -hmm. because that's unfortunately the nature of the industry well there was something poetic about him having the girls sort of cleaning out the houses as mm -hmm. almost like he was saying he's ready to give it to Pesquier or ready yeah. to give it to someone else Will you be sad to see him going to <laughs> You're like Mark Jacobs fan. <laughs> um, well, I think it will be really interesting because obviously he was he was the one that kind of put the signature, the stamp on mm. Wheat on Ready yeah. to Wear, which mm. is an incredible thing. Because now, when you think of Wheat on, you do really think of it as Ready to Wear, not just you know, yeah, yeah completely. Which is, I think, really mm. an incredible feat. Um, I, I thought what he did there was amazing, and I loved it. Um, but I do think Gear is a good match. Mm. I mm. think he will probably bring something quite sharp mm. and new to it and I think again when you sort of leave something that is that sort of like legacy you need someone to come in who is going to be able to do something quite different mm. yeah and sort of also has that love in the fashion in mm. well, you know, fashion mm. world and I think people will be certainly supportive of him but I do also think he will do something interesting and new and it, I, I definitely think it will be very sharp and edited mm. um, it's interesting because um, Gesky is coming to a house that hasn't got a, a couture archive so yeah. what's he going uh, yeah. go yeah, to do? Yeah, I think that's really interesting. Which, really I, which interesting. I thought he did a great job obviously oh at Balenciaga yeah. so I, I just feel it's going to be very high tech, I don't know why. Mm. Yeah, it'll be interesting if it is. Yeah, yeah I think that lack of archives are really Well I think his thing is yeah. modernism isn't it? Mm. Yeah. So, I don't mm. know. I, I've been used to seeing it the Mark Jacobs way so yeah. I'd, I'll be interested to what, see not what not knowing what it's going to be yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know what it's going to be it wasn't yeah. 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 before but, but no but I mean the, the slightly poppy element mm. that he brought to Vuitton which mm. I really liked yeah. so I don't know I don't know yeah. Well, he came into like or not. free time in a completely different era. I mean, he mm. transformed that. You know, he was such a driving force in making the luxury goods industry yeah. relevant yeah. for mm. a and introduced market. art yeah. Yeah. into and think about how generous in a way, he is you know, in a way. I mean, like you know, bringing in his friends that weren't particularly doing so well mm. or were ill, like Stephen Sprouse, mm. to do a bat. You know. It's, it marks a very generous person, yeah. clearly, yeah. you know, and he yeah, also say, knows genius. the right people for the right person yeah. for the job. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I guess yeah. that's come through here, hasn't it? That sense of kind yeah. of, you know, your friends, and it feels like a, a gang, but in a great way, not in that usual fashion way of it yeah. feeling quite exclusionary. Yeah, I mean, is it? You know, I we were talking about this earlier, but there is still also something, you know, much as they've done an absolutely kick-ass job on the show, there's still something slightly kind of odd about, you know his friend that works with him on design edits one of the world's biggest fashion magazines which has the woman that's starring in his campaign on the mm -hmm. cover yeah. shot and you know who's also shot by the husband of the designer that's now doing his diffusion label and there's a slight kind of you know in any other industry you'd be slightly worried about the monopolization of a certain sector mm -hmm. and going across you know through what's theoretically an independent fashion magazine, which yeah. is meant to be delivering Yeah, but Jürgen Teller had the yeah. choice. He could have shot yeah. her. He didn't want to shoot her. Which so would have meant Miley Cyrus. So then, if I was Mark allegedly, Jacobs, allegedly. And, I, and Jürgen <laughs> wouldn't shoot Miley Cyrus, mm. I'd go, fine. Well, then the next one I'd get would be, well, not the next one, but I, I think David Swims would be quite a good choice yeah. to after that, no? I mean, I don't know. Uh, for me, it's the crossover between the you know the design aspect the advertising aspect and the mm. magazine editorial mm. aspect right. you know all of us who've worked in fashion magazines know that it's a really thin line to tread mm. in terms of editorial control and the amount mm. of input that anybody advertising in the magazine wants to have on the editorial content and the fact that there is no line at all in that magazine it seems mm. is quite mm. I, as a journalist i find it troubling although obviously i think you know it's a wonderful magazine they've done an incredible job you know it's not like i'm I sorry, complain, but it's it's for me. It's something that I find, you know, just on a purely intellectual level, a little troubling. Mm. Mm. But I guess it is that thing in fashion. And it's actually a remarkably small industry, and mm. I think mm. our viewers, perhaps even mm. when you're in it, you forget that because it's so. You know, everyone does become friends with each other. Yeah. You see that we were yeah. talking about that before we went live. Even that thing of, um, you know, reviewing a show for a designer that you know personally, mm. and it's something mm. so many people have to do every every day. And you to be a good fashion. Mm. Like Kate, what makes love so great is Katie Graham's connections with people, but mm -hmm. then also 
in a way, I, I see what you're saying. It, it then makes it, it stops it being independent because she's got so many friends. And, but it's, but it's I also when you work with your friends. I mean, my friends like, who are hairdressers, makeup artists, they're the best in the world. And I like to work with them because they're my friends and they're also really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I, don't, I, I find it weird working with people I don't know. It's just mm. if there's a whole group of people, mm. yeah. which, ha- which happens. But yeah. I get that kind of slightly gang thing. Mm. But also, it helps it's, elevate it makes each you feel other. comfortable. Mm. I don't know if it's supposed to be like a, you know, an aggressive thing. I think I just find it's more comfortable to work with people that you know. Working like a, t- a strong team. Because mm. mm. you feel more secure. Mm. I don't know. Mm. It's quite an insecure thing doing fashion campaigns and fashion shoots. Mm. With, you know, especially if you're not with teams of people, you don't know who they are. It's like you don't, sometimes you don't know if you've got the right, if you're bouncing off the person in the right way or mm. you're getting I guess the it's result. That trust thing again. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So I, I, can't, I, I do understand why these people get together and, you know, collaborate mm. in the way they do. But and I understand what you're saying as well. Mm. No, I mean, I'm totally, you yeah. know, collaboration is a wonderful and a beautiful yeah. thing and very important to work with a team and a group of people mm. that you can trust. It's yeah. just when it's the financial aspect to it. Right. It's yeah. The, yeah. You know, the advertising placement which sustains yeah. the magazine which is then running an awful lot of product in its shoots. Yeah. Mm. It, it becomes quite an odd, mm. um, you know. Yeah. But I think that's cycle. quite a good symbol of, of a culture and an issue that trickles down so much. Mm. I think that's such an apt point for fashion where it is just kind of yeah, everyone knows each other and is friends with each other. Mm. And some, in some ways, everything's very official. In some ways, everything's very unsaid. And yeah, and I think that's yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting part of the industry. You think, you know, I just think on every, any other fashion magazine that I've worked on, that it's been a fight to make sure you don't have too much place in the magazine by external forces. Yeah, mm. I, so I wonder if it has going, ever bothered other yeah. advertisers that work with with Love. That's an interesting point. But do we like the fact that here that, that friendship seems to be sort of, uh, you said you know, they're elevating each other when you work in a gang, you said that before, mm. Rebecca, but do we like the fact that you know, this is very much pals working together? Is, do you think it's going to be a good thing in this context? I think it works. I think yeah. it works. It doesn't feel cliquey or ex- exclusive. Yeah. Because yeah. imagine if they, didn't, if they were two people that were put together to do this job, it could be a nightmare. Mm. Yeah. It wouldn't work. It no. w- yeah, it wouldn't work. Yeah. And you see that, don't you, in houses where you see... All the time. You know, complete disaster yeah. mm. so good girlfriends designing mm. clothes for great girls yeah. I always think partnerships and design are so fascinating mm. Mm. I that think that could be a great book in that don't yeah. you yeah. there's a great book coming out on that <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> bit of product but it takes the edge there. off doesn't it, it takes yeah. the edge off having to be responsible for everything mm. I mm. mean that's great no definitely <laughs> yeah and I always think that you know, I'm friends with them, so it's really biased, but mm. seeing it in London in the men's and with Aggie and Sam and the energy that they inspire in each other, and it's so amazing to see. And, it's, and I think to see it with two creatives who independently are on a really high level then come together, that's quite interesting. Mm. It's not like they've always worked together. Mm. I think it'd be interesting to see how that develops. But I guess it's <coughs> very similar to Mark and Katie. You know, they're, kind of, they're separate but together here, and that's interesting to see. So we're happy with this then. Yeah. We're all going to go away, cheers. I remember <laughs> when Katie worked in an agency that represented me called Zed Photographic as an office girl <laughs> and she made little belts as a sideline which Katie Grand started to shoot and this is where she is now. And I think it's fantastic. Aww. Mm. Oh, that's yeah, a lovely night to end on. Yeah. Very, yeah, good for her. I hope they're very happy. <laughs> She's done a really good job. Thanks, gang. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you.